going to do some research that I did last summer for my master's dissertation, which was a study of Garton Slack, looking at mummification and um, its social dimensions in interpreting the archaeological material. And so I will um, go through some recent research done on mummification in the Bronze Age in Britain as a kind of backdrop to my own research, then give you a brief background to Garton Slack as a cemetery, the scientific methods I used and the results of my histological analysis, and then I'll go more in depth into the archaeological interpretations before some brief conclusions at the end. So um, from the archaeological record, we, we kind of previously believed that mummification in prehistoric Britain was more or less limited to the phenomena of bog bodies from the Iron Age, which we know are quite an iconic thing in northwestern Europe. Uh, but recent research has shown that uh, mummification actually predates the Iron Age uh, and potentially spans from the Neolithic through to the Romans as following uh, the discovery of a Bronze, Bronze Age settlement at uh, Clad Helen, southeastern Scotland, uh, a, a collection of skeletal remains was uncovered whose spatial arrangement, articulation and undisturbed context suggest that they had somehow been manipulated and to make sense of these seemingly contradictory archaeological contexts, the scientists posited uh, that they had been uh, mummified before interment uh, and so Booth identified a series of preliminary burial traits and diagnostic criteria uh, that seem to be suggested of this kind of form of special funerary treatment. Um, and these include <coughs> tightly flexed or contracted remains, uh, post-mortem manipulation, at Clad Helen there was quite a few composite skeletons, or anomalous dating implying that the remains and their context are inconsistent. And so from this research, we kind of get this um, on-site mummy kit uh, that we can use. And so I was interested in taking this framework and applying it to archaeological material from uh, East Yorkshire because following the excavation of Wetwang Slack and Garton Slack in the 60s, 70s and 80s, John Dent, after he took over the excavations from TMC Brewster, noted um, several tightly crouched and contracted uh, remains, what he said were possible coffin burials, uh, at Wetwang Slack that appeared to constitute a selective group of individuals whose manner of interment, their bodily arrangement, as well as their location within the cemetery really set them aside from the general cemetery population. And Giles, in her 2012 book, A Forged Glamour, <coughs> argues that these might be possible cases of delayed burial representing socially significant individuals to the lo these local communities. And... She also suggests that there might be potential cases of mummification. And then <coughs> similar puzzling inhumations have been identified at Garton Slack. However, no research had been done to investigate or explain these peculiar arrangements of the burials. And so I... Oh, yeah. So uh, here's a distribution map of the Iron Age Square Barrows from uh, East Yorkshire. Uh, and Garton Slack and Wetland Slack is um, located here. And then this is the settlement and cemetery structure at Wetwang and Garton Slack. So uh, implementing Booth's criteria, I identified three burials that exhibited strong preliminary traits for possible mummification, and then a pair of comparative examples where mummification appeared unlikely. And in my research, I utilised histological analysis uh, under transmitted and polarised light microscopy looking at uh, the bacterial bioerosion in the bone, so that is the gradual degradation of the bone tissues and microstructures due to tunneling activity from microorganisms. And um, I used the Oxford Histological Index to assess and quantify the percentage of the bacterial bioerosion and Bifringens Index to look at the survival of the collagen in the bones. And the results of my analysis were both fascinating and rather unexpected, because of the collection of samples suspected to be mummified, all turned out to exhibit extensive levels of bacterial bioerosion, demonstrating that the process of decomposition had occurred to completion. And then of my comparative examples, um, Garten Slack 7, Barrow 4, Burial 1, uh, also showed um, extensive microbial tunneling activity, 
Um, and so it served as a good control sample. But then, interestingly, Garton Slack 7 Iron Age Grey 3 was anomalous in that it was the only sample analysed that exhibited a well-preserved microstructure with clearly defined osteons. And so its diagenetic pattern was similar to that of previously demonstrated Bronze Age mummified remains, uh, leading to the interpretation of a possible, uh, a positive case of mummification from garden slack. And so, because these results were um, rather unexpected, I think the archaeological interpretation becomes even more interesting. So, um, looking at the first individual, um, from my comparative sample set, this was an adult female, and so she exhibited the expected outcome of a burial uh, in a flexed position within kind of the normative expression at Garton Slack. Uh, but the interesting thing with this burial was the fact that she was found with the bones of a fetus located by her feet. And the fetus was assessed to be between six to seven months at time of death. And so this could be a case of an adult woman miscarrying her child, or it could be a premature birth that went tragically wrong for both uh, mother and child. The report from Garton Slack suggests that uh, this was a case of abortion. I'm not sure about that, but alternatively, the fetus could have been stillborn. Uh, osteologically, there are no clear indicators of stillbirths, but based on modern clinical observations, we know that premature babies who were born before 28 weeks are unlikely to survive. And so I think that we can definitely say that this woman died due to childbirth. Um, Nangarton Slack 7, Barrow 4, Burial 2. This was a juvenile individual um, suspected to be mummified, but showed no histological evidence of that. Um, but I think this is a possible indication that juveniles as a social group at uh, Garton Slack were not considered suitable for any kind of special funerary treatment. Uh, such as mummification, as a consequence of not yet having transitioned into the sphere of adulthood. And kind of, it demonstrates that the narrative of the sub-adults at Garton Slack uh, reflects a kind of visible desire to segregate uh, this portion of the population as they were all buried within two barrows at the cemetery structure and you don't find uh, immature individuals elsewhere in the cemetery. Um, Moving on, uh, Garton Slack 8, Iron Age Grey 4, was the remains of an elderly female. Again, the burial uh, positioning and uh, the odd angle of the head kind of suggested she might be mummified. However, again, no evidence of that. But the osteological analysis uh, shows that uh, she was in quite uh, poor health. And so um, it could be that um, she was suffering from emaciation. And uh, if this was the case, with a body with substantial muscle atrophy, would potentially allow for a, an active arrangement in the grave, where you would then see a burial expression that was very similar to that of potential mummified remains. <coughs> or you, this might also be a case of wrapping the body for having it uh, in a very tightly crouched, crouched position. Um, and I think it would be a case of you, you wrap the body once and then inter it. You don't have to do any more intervention after that. Um, and then this adult female was the most likely case of mummification. Her legs have uh, been folded over and tucked up against the torso and her arms are contracted on either side of her body. Um, and it was very, very peculiar when we first kind of just looked at the, um, at the photograph. Uh, but then again, no histological evidence for delayed um, decomposition. And so uh, this became more difficult to kind of theorise, and, and the osteological analysis of this individual shows that she was in relatively good health. And so I, th I think kind of the, the f from the previous individual, um, 
we can't say that she would have been at a natural kind of state of being so so thin that she would have been able to bury in this expression so um, looking to ethnographic material uh, the marina practice of the Malagasy on Madagascar actually provokes quite a powerful image of how the living interacts with the dead and so binding and wrapping our long-standing burial customs from all corners of the world as it it protected the deceased from a processes of destruction and um, I, I think it's reasonable to uh, posit that the woman from Garten Slack A, Iron Age Grave 2, could have been bound for an extended period of time after her death. And what we might be witnessing is an Iron Age um, kind of cultural practice of wrapping the body prior to interment, and then you might be looking at subsequently opening the grave and then rewrapping the body as it slowly decomposes, you would be able to get that really, really tightly contracted um, corpse um, and then oh yeah sorry um, and then the last individual from Garten Slack 8 was that of an adolescent individual um, and, th and th this, this one really confused me but it was interesting to work on so again it was from the comparative examples but it had very well preserved uh, microstructure of the bones um, and Booth, uh, his work on the Bronze Age <coughs> remains, uh, asserts that mummification in the Iron Age during the Bronze Age was likely due to um, people being immersed in bogs and natural environments that effectively waterlogged the remains. And we know from the archaeological record, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, that the Iron Age people knew of the bog's character um, and probably had a good understanding of what would happen if you were to put a person in the bog. And there are very good wetland candidates not far from the Chalk Valley of Garten Slack. Um, so I think this could be one way that this mummification has been achieved. But I think we also have to be open to alternative methods of mummification, such as wind drying or smoking. And then considering the possibility that this individual perhaps died at a time of year that made in immediate interment impossible, uh, we could also uh, see, say that this is a, perhaps the result of opportunistic natural cultural mummification. And we only need to look to the continent for kind of analogous studies. Utsi, the uh, ice mummy, for, provides a point of reference uh, that illustrates how seasonality can restrict uh, funerary options. And Garten Slack is located in the Yorkshire Walls, which would have been cut off during the winter due to the harsh environment. And so I think this, again, it represents another reasonable hypothesis for how this mummification um, occurred. Um, but al alternatively, being a multiple burial uh, with the remains of an individual aged between one and two years at time of death, which is burial four there, um, perhaps the delayed burial of this adolescent individual could be to accommodate the death and interment of this liminal infant because it's clear from the cemetery data that Garten Slack contains a high proportion of infant burials that are only, like I said, located in two barrows within the cemetery. And like there's an established practice of these infants being buried only with the, in the association of adult remains. And Giles puts uh, forward a picture of the Iron Age society where infants were not yet considered fully human and so they would not be recognised as suitable for individual burial. And the mummification case of Garten Slack 8, Iron Age Grave 3 could very well fit within this framework and it evokes quite an emotionally fitting storyline. Um, so a few brief conclusions. So uh, my study presents histological evidence of a case of mummification uh, as a funerary treatment in the Iron Age um, from East Yorkshire. And it demonstrates that the Iron Age is a suitable time period to investigate mummification as a mortuary practice because you see several peculiar burial arrangements that has not been extensively theorised. Uh, but it also shows that um, the Bronze Age framework and approach that was established a few years ago needs to be reconsidered and, and reworked to accommodate the complexities of the burial record in Iron Age society in Britain. 
And to finish, I would like to thank, uh, uh, without the help and permission from Paula Gentile, the curator of the Garten Slack collection at Hollenin Schweizer Museum, my research would not have been possible. So. Thank you.